Hey guys, back again, and today we're talking about the FX3 and the major firmware update this thing just got. Um, I have it rigged up for some, but you can tell this is my FX3 here, and pretty much how I like to walk around with it. Um, this 24 to 105 f4 from Sony G lens. Don't sleep on that lens if you're a videographer, by the way. That's a separate, separate uh, subject, but that's a pretty darn good lens especially for video. Don't use it so much for photos. But anyways, so Cine EI mode, the way it works is you basically, when you're in that mode, you shoot in either 800 ISO or 12,800 ISO. There's no other ISOs, just those two. You'll see when you, like for me on the, the back of my FX3, I, I use this scroll wheel here and I use this for, uh, for adjusting my ISO previously. Well, when you the way I've set it up now, when I spin that, it changes the exposure index. So on my screen, it looks like the exposure is changing, but nothing's really happening. It's just a, a tool to help you open or close your iris. It's a cinema camera now. We call it an iris, not an aperture. Open or close your iris or add or take away light to your, your scene to help you expose better. But it doesn't actually change anything. If you were in the low base at 800 it doesn't change when you, you you change your exposure index. That's what the EI and Cine EI stands for. So I think that's going to be confusing for a lot of people who've never used this kind of camera before with an exposure index. But you don't have to use it. You can update and stay in the uh, the flexible, I think it's flexible ISO. There's another mode in there. But when you use this, just wanted to make a quick video to tell you, you're either an 800 or 12,800. There's no in between. There's nothing else. And when you change that, it's going to look like the ISO is changing, but your exposure index is changing, which is basically, think of it kind of like a LUT on the, on the screen that's giving you the sense that you're over or underexposed. So then you adjust all the rest of the things, whether that be turning a light down or opening or closing your aperture to try and help you with exposure. It's a little counterintuitive from what you'd normally do. So like, if you think about it, when you raise your exposure index, you're gonna seem like you're overexposed, but you're not. So then when you lower things, you're gonna end up being underexposed more than you were when you turned it up, if, if that makes any sense there. Alistair Chapman has a video about the FX9 and the FX6 where he really dives deep into this and explains exposure index and how it works. For me, I don't really mess with the exposure index all that much, I just leave it in 800, with, and, and go to 12,800 if I need it. And then I can add or take away ND as needed. So for example, if I was indoors and you know 800 wasn't quite bright enough, but 12,800 was way too much, or just slap an ND on and use 12,800. For me, that's, that's the way I've always used my FX6 and I'm glad with the FX3 that I'm able to do that now because what was happening sometimes with my FX3, I would just bump that ISO up a little bit and pretty quickly noise starts happening on these FX3 or the A7S3. When you go over, it was 640, then you go, you know, 800, 12, 1000, 1600, whatever. Once you get up there over about 1600, 3200, you start introducing a lot of noise because I never have an issue with noise in any of my images on the FX6. At least for me, it's going to keep me out of those ISOs between 800 and 12,800 that are problematic. Cause sometimes I just like, eh, I'm not gonna get an ND. I'll just bump the ISO a little bit. It won't be that noisy. And what ends up happening, I get back the footage here and I'm, I'm like, oh, why didn't I just go to 12.8 and put an ND on? I was being lazy. I'm just overall excited about this. There's some other, other things in it with the menu that changes a little bit that are kind of nice. Um, the LUT thing, that's a real big part of this uh, that you can import your own LUTs. That's, that's huge for me. Cause I monitor with uh, the Phantom LUTs a lot of times and now I've imported those right in here, had no problems with it. You put them on your memory card. You go to uh, the file in the Sony file, Pro, and then there's a LUT folder. You just copy and paste them in there, and then you import them right in through the menu system. It's pretty simple. One thing I'll tell you, and it's right there at the beginning when you go to update it, make sure you, you remember your settings. Like if you've customized, like I customize a lot of the buttons, how they're laid out on my camera, and if you don't uh, don't remember how they are. There's no way you can save the settings then reload them like you can with the other ones because the if they're saved, it says it right on the beginning there, but I believe it, it's something to the effect of if they're saved on the 1.1 uh, or 1.01, whatever the previous firmware was, if it's saved in that, it won't read them with the new firmware. You're gonna just have to, to have your settings and, and remember them and reset everything up, but it's worth it. I think it's worth it. This is a cool update. I kind of wish we'd have got shutter angle. That's probably my biggest one. I'm getting more 
comfortable with using the uh, histogram. I prefer a waveform to expose with, but the histogram, I'm getting more comfortable with it on here. But the shutter angle would have been the nice one. So when you switch frame rates, it just automatically switches with you. But hey, I'll take what I can get for this camera. I make videos every now and then about Sony cameras, Blackmagic cameras, really any kind of cameras, microphones, gear like that. And, you know, most of the time, all this stuff I've purchased with my own money, and I just give you my honest opinion. I'm not like a sponsored YouTuber that I use this stuff for real in real life. And uh, I just want to share my experiences with you guys. The only way you can help me out is just by subscribing and liking this video, getting it out there more. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.